when the OTP commenced its investigations in 1994, the investigative resources were very scarce on the ground and it was um, obviously needed to be a focused investigation to make sure we got the best out of the resources that were available. Primarily your biggest thing was, of course, uh, crimes against people. Numbers of people were killed, their lives were ruined, family members were lost, uh, people were put in prison camps detained under absolutely terrible conditions. But we also recognize that crimes against historic monuments and against religious institutions uh, are also extremely serious crimes against humankind as a whole and these properties have special protection. The main mandate given to the OTP, the Office of the Prosecutor, was to ensure that those most responsible for the conflict were in fact, it were in fact brought to justice. But clearly in carrying out that mandate we were also required to incorporate uh, the destruction of cultural property. Well, in both the Karadzic and Miladic cases, the prosecutor was under great pressure to reduce the scope of the indictment. And in a shelling case, that requires looking at the availability of forensic evidence, of expert evidence, of eyewitness evidence, and assessing whether that's going to be enough to prove the case at trial. We may think we know what happened, but proving the case beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law on the basis of the evidence is a much different task. There was a lot of debate in the prosecution in before the, when the indictment was being prepared as whether to include, frankly, to include the old bridge or not. Because there is a lot of evidence, frankly, that it was, that the, the, the Bosniaks, the, you know, the Bosniaks were using it to supply the, the, the enclave on the west side of the river. And so there was a significant debate whether it was a legitimate military target. And, um, so in drafting the indictment, for the final decision, the final compromise, if you would, if you were, we'll put, let's put it in the indictment, we'll see what happens. But we weren't gonna put a spotlight on it. When the conflict erupted in Kosovo, the prosecutor was very much aware that the crimes being committed in Kosovo would very likely lead directly to Milosevic's involvement in those crimes and thus pave the way for an indictment against Milosevic. Uh, we took the view that we did not have sufficient resources to both uh, investigate Milosevic's involvement in the crimes as well as incorporating cultural destruction. The tribunal was not set up to investigate and prosecute every crime that had been committed in the former Yugoslavia. And the closer we got to the leaders, uh, then we slackened off the investigation into other areas, including the destruction of cultural property.
it was clear to me that someone would have to establish what had happened with regard to cultural heritage in Kosovo. I made inquiries with UNESCO to see whether they were pursuing any systematic study, and the answer was no. I put out an internet appeal, and Mr. Andrew Hersher, an architect whom I had known professionally, approached me with the idea that we should do a study together. We stopped at The Hague on our way to Kosovo, and we had a meeting with the uh, Office of the Prosecutor. We first asked them whether, asked the Office of the Prosecutor whether they would be interested in the kind of information that we were collecting. They answered in the affirmative. They also told us that we would not be acting as agents of the tribunal. They also indicated some of the kinds of things that would be useful for their work. When the trials uh, commenced before the various trial chambers, uh, the prosecutor was required to establish that the cultural destruction that was taking place or had taken place was directly linked to the ethnic cleansing that had taken place throughout the former Yugoslavia. So the prosecutor realised it would be necessary to establish this link by calling uh, experts in their field and two obvious ones were uh, Reidelmeyer and uh, Colin Kaiser. So I was one of two UNESCO observers sent to Dubrovnik in November and December of 1991. When the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina began, the, f the fear, the sentiment that I had that this was a war which is not just about uh, taking military objectives in a strict sense of the term, but these were wars about perhaps of an identity, which means that um, other things were also being targeted. It was extremely hard to go on mission because none of the international community um, that would say that it's a problem of mandate. Uh, Umprofor didn't have a mandate for cultural heritage. Uh, the European Community Monitoring Mission didn't have a mandate for it. Uh, UNHCR didn't have a mandate for it. Uh, so it took a while to get into the field. Unfortunately, despite the work of the ICTY, the world is still witnessing the destruction of cultural property. We see ISIS destroying cultural property in Syria. We see destruction of cultural property in Mali. But hopefully the precedents that have been set by the ICTY will encourage others, including the International Criminal Court, the ICC, to make sure that cultural uh, destruction will form part of the investigations and uh, prosecutions in the future.